Well, you know, election season is heating up in British Columbia. The NDP has unveiled its full platform, including budgets and a B.C. rail inquiry. Joining me now with his thoughts on the party's plan for the province is Sun columnist Lorne Gunter. He's live from Edmonton. Good morning, Lorne. Good morning, Alex. So a lot of plans, it seems, uh, when it comes to the NDP in B.C. Yeah, an awful lot of uh, new spending, higher taxes, uh, you know, some, some bold moves, I guess, thinking about selling off BC Place, maybe the Vancouver Convention Center, uh, all sorts of uh, things thrown into the mix yesterday. So many, in fact, that it's very difficult to pick through what costs what, how they're going to pay for these new initiatives. Uh, it looks to me as though they've costed out about uh, $2 billion worth of, of new spending and where they're going to pay for it, but they probably have enumerated about $4 billion in new spending. So there's a $2 billion in there, that, it, and it's not entirely clear to me uh, where they're going to get the money from. Okay, is this surprising at all when it comes to the BC NDP, though? No, and it doesn't surprise me, actually, when it comes to just about any political party. The other thing is, I think, you know, most people in, in, in BC have their uh, antennae turned off when it comes to details from the NDP of how they're going to uh, spend money and how they're going to pay for it. Because, you know, they, I think the BC NDP could be promising to return ritualistic human sacrifice to BC uh, with, with victims chosen at random, and, and they'd still get elected. I, I, I don't think it matters much to British Columbians. They don't expect that most parties are going to have uh, real accurate projections of tax increases and spending increases. Uh, and they, they just want rid of the Liberals. I mean, I, I don't see uh, how this, and I think it's a fairly threatening uh, uh, election platform, I don't see how it's going to upset the, the uh, BC NDP's run to power. I mean, there's one thing in, in, in the platform that was released yesterday that, uh, that would really, really worry me if, uh, if I ran a business in BC, and that is they promised to make it easier for workers in BC to unionize. I, I mean, I think that, that could be devastating to their economy. Uh, and yet, that hardly got any focus at all because of all the spending promises people were trying to pick through and figure out how they, they would be uh, paid for. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's a complex document. I think, it's a, I think it's a frightening document. But like I said, I'm not sure there are enough voters in B.C. who are paying attention uh, because they simply want to get rid of the Liberal. Yeah, and that's the thing. It looks like the NDP are... are just basically going to steamroll the liberals in, in this time around. But that that hate, or I, I don't know how to, how to put it really, for the liberals, or just you know the, the, the fact that people want to get rid of this party, why aren't we seeing the conservatives uh, grasping onto this a little bit better and, and making a run for, for the gold? You know, I think there's two factors there. First of all, I think people are worried about vote splitting on the right, so that if you, or the center and right, uh, so that if, you know, you're worried about the NDP coming in, y you might think that the Conservatives are a wasted vote, uh, a protest vote. Uh, as it gets closer to the election, if the uh, NDP strength doesn't come down, if it doesn't appear as though the Liberals have any chance at all of, of retaining power and keeping the NDP out, I think you may see the Conservative vote go up because people start voting with their ideology rather than with their fear about an NDP government. But I think the other, the, the second side of it is, it, you know, it takes a long time for a party that's really been marginal for 70 or 80 years in B.C. politics to, to work its way back. I mean, I, this election, uh, they, they, they double or triple, perhaps, the support that they had in the last election, and they look for the next election to be the one where they make their breakthrough. That, that's very common in, in Canadian politics. The Reform Party in the 90s, federally, uh, you know, the Conservatives took two elections, uh, 2004 and 2006, uh, nationally, before they finally even got minority government status. So I don't think that two-election strategy is, is uh, all that far off with the B.C. Conservatives. What's surprising to me here is one thing that you said that really resonates. The fact of the matter is it's not just B.C. politics, but across the board, uh, people are just fed up with the, the B.S. that comes out before an, an election actually happens. And, and people have read into it now. The, the public is a lot smarter, I believe, when it comes to what's really going on than they were, let's say, a few decades ago, because they know that all these guys, uh, the, the stuff that's coming out of these people's mouths is to win the election. So in this case, why not inject a little bit of truth if you are one of the opposition parties uh, and be a little bit more rational about what you're saying instead of uh, that $4 billion you're talking about? Why don't they cut it down to $2 billion and, and really sort of stick to the guns 
and push it through, like with some reality, because you will get reelected if that happens. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no impetus on the, uh, the, the there's no pressure on the, the D.C. and the Democrats to be very realistic, because, as you said, I think they're going to steamroll to power. Uh, but why not, with one of the other parties, be much bolder then? Uh, you, you know, I'd pull the goalie, uh, put the extra attacker on, and, and try and win uh, the election. I mean, it, it, it occurred to me, and it's interesting you should say that, you know, people are sick and tired of politicians who say one thing to get elected and then do something else when they're in office. It occurred to me when, when we were all standing there in, in, in uh, Calgary during Ralph Klein's memorial a few weeks ago, that one of the reasons he was so immensely popular was he did exactly the opposite. He told you what he was going to do in order to get elected, and then after he did it, then after he got elected, he did it. Uh, you know, wouldn't that be a nice as a change? And, and I don't suspect, expect most British Columbians believe Adrian Dix and the NDP will follow through on their uh, fiscal management plan. I think that the NDP will follow through on all the big promises they have for new uh, programs for disabled British Columbians, new programs for First Nations, uh, you know, more environmental regulation. I think they expect all of that to happen. I think they expect the NDP to make good on its easier unionization rules. Uh, what they don't expect them to follow through on is holding to $4 billion in spending over three years and finding the money within the budget and some tax increases to cover that. I think they expect the deficits will go much higher under the NDP in B.C., and the economy will slow. But they are just so fed up with the Liberals that it wouldn't matter what the NDP were promising and how unrealistic it is. Yeah, and that seems to be the reality. Thank you, Lauren. You bet. That was Sun Media columnist Lauren Gunter from Edmonton.